like going hunting Just me, my hound, and my gun Chasing them deer, rabbit, and squirrel Now that's my kind of fun I like going fishing too I'll go on any whim Looking for the big bass The crappie and the brim Just give me a wide open field To walk through Give me an ocean so deep I want to ride the longest river in the world Or maybe climb the highest mountain peak Like going down to the fishing hole My buddies and me and my old cane pole Bait them hooks and wet them lines It's life I love so fine It's almost supper time You'd think the world was mine And now for today's outdoor adventure, here's Archie Phillips. Folks, we're down on the Tom Bigby River, just straddling Alabama and Mississippi with Paul Elias from Laurel, Mississippi. And uh, Paul's nice enough to come over here and show us some of his good fishing places. And uh, Paul, uh, this particular area right in here, is this one of your favorite places? Yeah, Archie, it is. I tell you, you know, this time of year, fish tend to start ganging up. You know, they've uh -huh. done their spawning deal and everything and they start start grouping up. And this Tom Bigby River is just really known for, for schooled up fish. Bunched up fish. Bunched huh? up fish. And uh, basically what we're gonna be doing here, this the first place we're gonna fish here anyway, is a, it's kind of a bar coming across the creek and it's real shallow up on top of it and it goes all the way across the creek and it falls off on either side of the bar, 10, 10 foot of water, eight, 10 foot of water. And there's a little bit of a little bit of grass starting to grow and the fish are starting to gather up. This has been an area that I've always caught a lot of fish in. You know, I've never really caught any real big ones here, but I've caught a lot of numbers. I see. Yeah. Now, Paul, we put in here, is that the China Bluff Landing? China Bluff Landing. That's up Highway 17 off of uh, I-59, and uh, I guess the closest town would be Aliceville, wouldn't it? Probably the closest or, or, big town. Yeah, and the, the other town, there was what, Geiger and ML right, right along in there, and right. Epps is south of us. And so we're going to fish. This is a creek we're in here, right? Right. And uh, then we're going to maybe fish the river some, too. Yeah, right? we'll probably get out on the river and do some good crankbaiting and, and Carolina rig stuff. You're you kind know. of known for crankbaiting, aren't you? I kind of like it. <laughs> All right, now, Paul, uh, right quick, if you would, show us what we're going to start with. All right, well, we f we're basically fishing a, a live rubber jig. It's a Stanley jig skirt and stuff. It's a It's got some metal flake in it. We're, we're throwing black, brown, and blue, and we've got the, the Stanley crawl worm on there I see. for a trailer. Uh, that, that works a lot better in the hot weather. It works good all the time, but in the hot weather, it seems to work a lot better than pork because you don't have to worry about it drying out or I anything see. like that. Uh, we'll be using some fish formula, you know, some sparkle scale stuff on the, on the frog, on the trailer, on the, on the jig. Right and, here. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, they bite these things pretty good. I think we'll catch a lot of fish. That'd be great. Well, let's give it a try. All right. You know, I've, Archie, I've been using this stuff about eight or nine years now, seven or eight years anyway, and I just, I just really believe that it, that it helps in strikes and it helps keep getting the fish to hold on to the bait. All you need is them to hold it a split second longer. Yeah. yeah, well, you know, it's just, it's an attractant and, and, and as long as it, you know, I know it works and I know it can hurt, and if it gets me one more bite in a tournament, you know, it's definitely something that <laughs> well, I need. I got a few other buddies like you that they don't go out without that fish for me. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're going to do now is just kind of throw right up on this road. And okay, now the road is what, this away? Oh. Yeah, it's an old, it's an old road. It's a, like a bar right across the creek. We're going to throw up on it and bring it back. All right, now. When you say throw up on it and bring it back, now there's got to be a wrist action, something we need to know about. Now, what's your... What's your motion there well really you know everybody everybody asks how to fish it you know they say i don't even never fished a jig you know i don't know how to fish a jig and if you know how to plastic worm fish you know how to jig fish cause same deal huh? it's the same deal you're just picking it up and letting it fall picking it up and letting it fall are you watching yeah. your line going in the water right same same way you know sometimes they'll hit it hard sometimes they'll just peck at it you know it's just a matter it's just a matter of paying attention and you can catch them you know i think you need to hit a fish a little harder with a jig uh, you gotta get past that weed guard and everything. Make sure you drip. You know, make sure you get him, get him hooked. I see. The thing about a, the thing about a jig, I don't know what it is, but big fish like it. You know, and I, that's why if, they, if they'll bite it, I'd rather throw a jig than a worm because uh -huh. it just seems like you consistently catch bigger fish. There's one right there. He touch it. Yeah, he's got it. You ready? There he is. Whoa, that's a good one. Look at that thing. That's a fine one, Paul. That's good. 
Look at that. Yeah, you, I believe you now when you talk about a big one takes that thing. Goodness that old, gracious alive. That old fish was, he was thought, sitting there waiting, wasn't he? You know, I just told you, I done got in a little close. I'm on top of him. He hit it. <laughs> He hit it kind of right out of the boat. Thing. That's oh, pretty, that's outstanding. That's pretty nice fish. They they uh, gobble it up pretty good too, don't oh, they? Oh yeah, he got it. Got it right where you want him. Yeah, that's a fine one. Yeah, you can tell she's already spawned out. Uh huh. You, know? you think that size will kind of be in there together? I don't know. That's a pretty good fish for this place right here. You know, I think they might run a little bit. There's smaller. another one. Just hit me. Hit him. I missed him. Oop. I sure missed. I him. believe it gathered up in there though. That's a good sign. Goodness gracious alive. Well, that's what I call calling your shot right there, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's see what we can do with them here. Now, Paul, let's see. I got to hit right there in the same identical place. Yeah. They, they'll probably be gathered up. What we need, what you want to do is let that thing get to the bottom, aren't you? Okay. And just, you know, just hop it along. And they, they usually, they pick it pretty good. Uh-huh. Ah, there he goes. You got him. Yeah. That's pretty good? Yeah, he's pretty good. He coming? Here he comes. Oh, my goodness. Gracious alive. Go ahead and reel in. I'm coming right now. That's good, one, Paul. Whoa, she. Under the boat. Chris. Under the boat, hold him. He's oh, kind of mad. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I'm going to give him a little line. <laughs> Let him do his thing. <laughs> now, that's one of them times you don't use that pro deal where you snatch him in the boat and play with him later, isn't it? Right. Boy, he's coming right up under the boat, ain't he? Yeah, he's he kind of upset there about this there deal. Come. There he comes. There he comes, Paul. Goodness gracious. Now, folks, y'all seeing pro-style fishing right now, if you've ever seen it in your life. Look at that thing. Boy, that's another fine one, Paul. Yep. Yeah, Oh. 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 Pro release. Pro release. Now, Paul, <laughs> that fisher went five or better, wouldn't he? Ah, he was around five pounds, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked lean. I could see his belly done laid out, hadn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He, well, we, a, he was blind in one eye, huh? too. Did you see that? No. He was definitely blind in one blind eye. Blind in one eye. Old poor old critter out there trying to get a meal and getting stuck from every direction. <laughs> you've been You've been professionally fishing. Uh, for how long? Uh, about 10, 10, 12. 10, 10 12 years. I've been on the BASS trail 10 years. 10 years. Tell me some of your your good times there. What's What's been some of your your accomplishments there with well, this you know, organization? Definitely the best thing that's ever happened to me was winning the Bassmasters Classic. I see. In 1982 over on the Alabama River at Montgomery. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I've won, I've won three of his other events. And in, in the in the ten years I've been fishing, and, you know, I guess the the main deal is uh, is either winning or qualifying for the for the Bassmasters Classic. I'll be going to my ninth Classic this year. I see. Well, uh, do y'all add up your points and all of you uh, to win the Classic? You got to have the most points for the year. Is that right, or is it just a no, one fish off? To win the Angler of the Year, you got to have the most pounds for the year. I see. Uh, the classic, they take the top 35 anglers through the whole year through all six events. Uh-huh. And we got a beaver or something swimming across the lake. It's yeah. probably a muskrat, you know. Yeah. Oh, unless rat? it's a little bitty beaver. It could be a muskrat. <laughs> he ain't worried about nothing, is he? No. Nah. Paul, if you had to classify yourself as a type of fisherman, uh, what what is your what is your heavier leaning? What, what, what would you... If you had your rathers, they just let you fish your rathers and you could make it happen the way you want to do, what, what would you be doing? I'd be out in the middle of the lake hunting some kind of underwater structure. I, that's the way I like to fish. I tell you, it, it'd suit me just fine if there wasn't a willow bush in the water <laughs> that you could see or a grass bed. or. But now, Paul, uh, what you're talking about is what most fishermen hate to do, isn't it? Well, you know, the thing about it, well, people don't realize, I, you know, I'm sure they realize it, but 95% of those guys go out there and beat the bank. And there's a lot of fish on the bank. There's probably more shallow fish you know, uh, active fish than there are out, out in open water, you know. But, but the thing about it, you know, kind of pressure that we get on these lakes, lakes now, you know, everybody's beating on the bank. And regardless of whether there's somebody on the bank, when you get there, you don't know if somebody didn't just go down it the past 15 minutes and I take see. off, you know. And it's just, it's a matter of getting out there. It takes a while to find that open lake stuff, but 
when you find it, you got you a place that they're on all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and well, for the majority part of the year, the only time they're going to leave it's in the springtime to spawn. And, you know, if it takes you, I'll go to a tournament and and take all three days of practice, just like I did at Lake Gunnersville, you know, and it saved me to qualify for the Classic. I took all three days of practice and, and fished out on the open lake stuff instead of concentrating on the grass beds like everybody else did. I found one place in one three place. days. But I caught, between me and my partners, we caught 65 pounds off that one place. I see. You know? So what you're saying is get your fish locators and get out there. And even if you're not fishing right when you want to be at the crack of dawn, get on out there and find the fish because you can catch more fish in 30 minutes out there than all day sometimes on the bank. That's right. Well, you know, I saw uh, Bill Dance. Now, he had uh, the first time he made his name at Lake Eufaula, I was trolling a hellbender down the, down the river, and I seen him stop. And I believe he caught five or six that run from five to seven pounds in a spot wasn't big around as a wash tub. Huh? Way out in the middle. That's that's the whole deal. I mean, it, it looked like they'd quit biting, but you can keep throwing into them when you find them out in a the big part of the river, can't you? Well, you know, they gather up. They always gather up in a tight area. You know, you got, just take an underwater island, for example. You know, you got an underwater island that might be an acre big or an acre and a half big, and it may be there may be two stumps on that whole underwater island. Uh -huh. And they'd allow to be 75 fish around those two stumps and not another fish anywhere on that acre and a half island. Well, you know? I've been diving for about 35 years. And I've been, it's like Smith Lake, it's a good example. I've been miles and miles and miles under there and you go along for a long way and never see an edible fish. And then you come up on one little place and it'd be just covered up with them. So I know what you're talking about there. It's a... Uh, it's a real good phenomenon for it. And if the people pick up on it and learn how to get out there and find these on the open water, uh, their production will be a lot better on it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's a good one. No, I don't think he's You don't quite... think he is? Yeah. Uh, he's trying to get bigger on me. Yeah. Now, he well, he grabbed that in that time, didn't he? I mean, he was serious. Yeah, he is a good one, too. Is he a good one? I'm telling you. That gum, a good old school of fish done pulled up on this bar. Yeah. I ain't even seen him yet, Paul. Well, he's acting like he's good. I... Oh, he's just mean. I'm going to tell you what, that's a mean huh? little critter right there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Goodness gracious. Look where he's hooked. No wonder. Well, I mean, he done spit that thing out when I set the hook. Look where he's hooked. No, words, you, you got him in the head when he I got, yeah. Because you, cause if you hadn't snatched, you'd have missed that fish, yeah. wouldn't you? Look, Look at that. that. Look at that. He's a healthy critter there. Yeah. Now. Well, open up, you little guy. And I'll turn you loose. Look at that. In other words, he hit it, and when you snatched, you had that. If you'd have given him a slack, that fish would have been gone. If I, <laughs> look is, at that. I don't even know if she laid out yet or not. No, there's still some yeah. there's still some pouch right there. Yeah. Look at that. That's a healthy critter, though. It sure is a healthy one. Yeah, you were mean. You earned this right here, little lady. <laughs> there you go. Now, this jig fishing is, this is this comes after, basically, after they spawned out and they're, and they're well, wanting to bunch up. Is that right, Paul? No, not necessarily on a jig. Now, a jig's a good spawn bait, but the thing about it, a lot of people don't realize about a jig is they'll lay it down after the spring, but a jig will catch good fish all year long. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get a little trickier on them. Here. All right, what you, what, you, what you up to now, Paul? We're going to put a rattle in this crawl, in this crawl one. A rattle? A rattle. That right there is going to attract them a little more. Basically, when I just punch me a hole in there. And now this is just a little small? Just a little small plastic tube kind with, of a little, uh, with three little BBs in it. You can it. buy them around different places? Yeah. This, this one right here is made by, by Weapon Lures, Gary Klein. It's a company that, that Gary Klein formed. Gary Klein's a real good fisherman. He was Angler of the Year this year. I see. But uh, it's just a just a little addition to a to a to a bait that a lot of times gets you get you bit when you can't get bit. Uh huh. You know, I use I, I use them all the time. I re, I won the Lake Okeechobee Pro Am down there in December. That's the last victory I had with BASS, and it, I really believe that that rattle in my worm is what what helped That's me. That's one where they said that you don't need to be using no jig. One wasn't it? Well, nobody using jig down there, but you would, Paul. Well. I wasn't using a jig on that. I was just using a worm. Just a worm. Just a worm. But it's, it was a, it was a deal. I was fishing in such heavy stuff that a jig was just, just wouldn't come through it right. I'd like to have been able to use a jig. I'd have probably caught bigger fish. Uh huh. 
I better get you one of them rattles out because okay. you're going to be begging for one in a minute. There he is. Get him. Ah! That gun. Mm -hmm. He pulled it right out of his mouth. There he is. All right, aren't you? There, there he is. There yeah, he that's is. That's a good one, too. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Ah, right, boy, look at that little devil. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, I repeated what you did a while ago. That's a quick release program. That's a quick release program. Well, let me, let me say this, Paul. You see, you took that rattler, though, didn't you? Yep. Now, look out. What's the size hook in that on that jig right there? That right there is about a five out. About a five out. Yep. I hit him pretty hard. I thought I had him stuck a little better than that. But you put that formula in that rattler, and it definitely pays off. The quality of these fish is pretty nice up here, Paul. Yeah. I mean, it's tournament stuff right here, ain't it? Yeah. That's kind of what you. That's kind of what I always look for, anyway. I know. see. But that, yeah, this is truthfully. The quality of what we've stuck this morning is a little bit better than what I normally catch it. Is that right? Yeah. I think you brought some luck to the spot, aren't you? Well, I tell you what, I always believe I'm going to catch them or I don't ever go. You understand what I'm you, saying? Let me dock the yeah, yeah, man, I believe in that. Look at that. Look man. at that shed. Get hey, something hey, chasing him right there. Hunt, Did you see that? They hunting groceries right here. Yes, sir. Archie, we're having a lot of, we having a lot of short strikes. Uh-huh. They're grabbing that jig and they're hitting it good. Well, I've had what? four set downs. Right. Now we're going to go to a different bait here. All right, what we're going to do? We're going to start throwing a deal called a, made by Man's Bait Company. It's called a Limit Finder. Limit Finder. Yeah. Basically what you got, now this rig's more or less set up for the river or deeper water, but it'll work right here. See these little hooks? Yeah. You got two little hooks in this worm. Uh -huh. You got a little plastic guard that the hook hooks right into to keep you from catching all that grass and stumps and stuff. In other words, you got two covered up hooks. Two covered up hooks. All little right. old hooks about the size of bluegill hooks. Uh-huh. You got How much line we got right there in that ball? What's that? Three, four, to, three, three to four foot. foot. Three to four foot. Three to four foot of leader line. All right. And you got a swivel, you got a bead, and a one ounce weight. Man, you got a big old weight. Yeah, uh, but it you'll see that it doesn't really matter. But basically what you're doing there, this bead right here is it makes noise and it also protects you not from that heavy weight coming down on top of it all the time. Okay. The swivel's there to to keep this from twisting your line and also, you know, to, to, to get your leader on there for effectively. You know, you wouldn't want to just tie the line to line. Yeah, I got you. Okay, so now if they, if they want to come up there and, and peck that little old thing right there. You want to let them have it? I think they're going to get pecked back. All right. Before you put your bottle down, squirt yours. I'm going to get me another squirt. I'm going to leave mine on until you All tell right. me otherwise. Now, you, right. know my, you know my game plan. I don't guide the guide. Well, I mean, we got you one rigged up over there. But... All right. This usually catches smaller fish. It'll is catch big it fish, but it, but I'm, but they ain't gonna be pecking on that thing. Boy, and, you can throw that thing out of sight, can't you? And not getting it. It did. Got him. Got him. There he is. He's in a stump. There's some brush right there. There he comes. Throw right toward that point there. Arch. Okay, I see it. And that starts action with that worm right there. I guarantee you. Paul, let me ask you a question. If, if, if a fishing contest boiled down like a football game and it wound up, there wasn't but two folks left in a world champion, who would you hate to have to be up against of all the people you ever fished with? <laughs> Just me, you, me and somebody else? You and somebody else. Who would you, who would you rather, uh, who would be the guy you'd hate to fish against the most? <laughs> That's a hard one because I, I know tell it's you, hard. there's about there's about five or six of them that there's more than that really, but there's five or six of them that I I know I'd be I'd have trouble with any of them. But <laughs> probably I'm gonna have to say I'm gonna have to say two people. Okay, it'd be Rick Plun or Larry Nixon. I see they both tough, huh? Well, they're so stinking consistent, and Rick Plun is he's mentally. He's got it together so much mentally that, that just against one other person, I think the other guy would probably be at a disadvantage before he ever got started. But, uh, you know, most of us, most of the, you know, guys like, like Hank Parker and, and, and Larry and Tommy Martin. There he is. There he is. There you go. I believe mine run a little bit smaller than yours, though. Uh, hey, they're fish. Now that's a good idea, but this old thing would work pretty good most anywhere, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, this is 
like I said, it's a confidence rig. It's, it'll catch fish about anywhere when the wind's blowing. It, you're not as near, near as big a disadvantage. Put him on that side. He may tell him others what's going on. We'll get a few of these little ones out of here, and then we'll go back to catching bigger. All right. Well, uh oh, right on top of you, Paul. A little bitty guy. This fish. Oh yeah. Well now, th this has been a good example to show how that jig, jig catch a lot catch bigger, bigger fish. fish and some of these other methods are smaller, right? This little guy here. He was. I see why he was hiding in the grass. Look at his side. I reckon he got <laughs> he got hit. Uh, looked like a gar hit him, don't Something it? Something been after him, hadn't it? Yeah, show sure has. But that's a good way. Now you'll catch numbers of fish with this rig. Uh, and, and you'll get a big one every now and then, won't you? Oh, yeah. We get out on that river, we'll probably, we ought to catch a few three-pounders on this rig. Uh-huh. But, you know, they'll bite that jig out there, too. They will. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, Paul, you showed me where these fish are. <laughs> no, hit the bottom that time. Did you? Uh, you showed me bars and drop-offs and places to look and all that kind of stuff and and I believe it's rather than just coming out here and trying to fish a whole big old span of water you take that depth finder and look around and get what you know is a good place a little show of fish get in there and use the methods we've used today and should take home pretty good miss fishing well, I'd say you could well listen I appreciate you being with us and sharing this with us and uh, I know the folks down at Laurel Mississippi you probably done taught all them folks how to fish down in that area and uh, well, you got to hide it from them they're too close to your home too close to <laughs> no. and Paul is a real real champ and a real gentleman and a pro and he's always been good about sharing his knowledge with folks and I hope you folks watching has had a good time with us as we've been out here today on the Tom Bigby River y'all stay tuned again next week for some more outdoors with Archie Phillips <laughs>